A World War II B-24 bomber is traveling at 200 miles an hour at an altitude of 1,000 feet, and the crew intends to drop a bomb on an enemy ship. So there's a, a boat out here, and they would do this they, in World War II. They would actually bomb ships, not just dive bombers, but actual, actual bombers, like B-24s would end up dropping bombs on enemy ships. So there's an enemy ship, and then the bomber is up here. And as we talked about in the lesson, he has to lead the the um, he lead, lead his target a good bit. In other words, he has to drop the bomb from back here because his velocity is going to be the initial velocity of the bomb. So the bomb starts off here with whatever initial velocity the plane had when the bomb was released, in this case, 200 miles an hour and then the bomb goes in this parabolic path and hopefully hits the target. Now in this case I'm going to convert the units here to metric units. You don't have to, you could solve this in English units, but we have an inconsistency here. We have miles per hour and feet, so we're going to have to do some kind of unit conversion no matter what. So let's go ahead and, and convert these to metric units. A thousand feet times one meter per 3.281 feet and the feet cancel so the a thousand a thousand feet comes out to 305 meters and then the initial velocity is 200 miles per hour so I'll multiply by 1609 meters per mile and the miles cancel out and multiply by one hour per 3600 seconds and the hours cancels out and that leaves me with meters per second and when I multiply all that out I get 89.4 meters per second now let's do the vertical first here if I do the vertical, I, I know this height, 305 meters, and I know that um, I can find the time it takes to fall that height. So I'm going to let down be my positive direction, and I'm going to think about the vertical motion. Okay, vertically, and you have to recognize that the initial velocity is zero vertically. And the acceleration here is going to be positive 9.8 meters per second squared, because I said down is positive. And if down is positive, the initial height is zero, and the final height is 305 meters. And you should see that, that an initial height of zero and a final height of 305, those two numbers arranged that way, with zero at the top and 305 down here, that's consistent with down being positive. So I have my initial and final positions accordingly. And then I'll use this equation y is equal to y0 plus v0t plus one half a t squared and in this case the initial height was zero and the initial velocity was zero so I just have this y is one half a t squared and then from that I can figure out the time that it takes to fall that distance rearranging this equation algebraically gives me t squared is equal to 2y over a, which is 2 times 305 meters divided by 9.8 meters per second squared, and these meters cancel, leaving me with seconds squared. This comes out to, uh, punch all that in the calculator, I get 62.2 seconds squared, and that's t squared. And I take the square root of both of those and I get t. t comes out to be 7.89 seconds. So he has to release the bomb 7.89 seconds before he's over the boat. That bomb is going to be falling for 7.89 seconds. So horizontally it's going to be traveling at this speed for that long. So we can figure out how far it will go horizontally as it falls. And that's how much he needs, to, that, that's the distance that he needs to be 
away from the boat before reaching the boat before dropping the bomb on the boat. So now let's switch over from vertical and do horizontal here. Okay, and horizontally we know that the initial velocity, what we found just a second ago, 89.4 meters per second, and horizontally the acceleration is zero. And we know the time is 7.89 seconds, what we found from the vertical motion. And we know that the initial position is zero. And we're just going to use this equation, x equals v times t. We're not going to write out v zero t plus one half at squared uh, because there's no acceleration, there's no initial position. So just x is v times t, and we'll put in those numbers. 89.4 meters per second times 7.89 seconds. Seconds cancel leaving us with meters and we get 705 meters. Now we should point out that this assumes the ideal case of no air resistance which is not entirely realistic. Um, at, at low speeds air resistance tends to be pretty negligible. At these speeds the air resistance would be significant. So an actual bombardier doing this would be taking into account the air resistance and the wind as best he could. But, um, but this problem still at least demonstrates the concept of projectiles, and specifically the concept that you have to do the vertical and horizontal independently.